Okay, hey everybody. This is John Heritage with Evenbound. Um, I am joined by none other than Luke Summerfield, who is the product lead for the HubSpot CMS. Um, I've been talking with Luke a little bit here about our experience this year moving from WordPress over to the HubSpot CMS and some of the growth that we have seen. Um, and we're gonna talk about a few of those points and I'm gonna ask Luke to speak to a few of those things um, and, and give everybody some idea of, of what you can expect um, when you move from WordPress over to the HubSpot CMS. Um, so to start, uh, you know, I, this, is, this video is actually gonna be a part of a, a case study um, a Luke that I'll here I'll screen share and uh, we can kind of look at that together. Um, this case study that um, walks people through our ex our specific experience. Now I know everybody may not see the same thing that we saw, but we saw some pretty transformative things happen when we moved over back in April. Um, some of those you know big big picture items would include things like website traffic growth. Um, increasing 220%. Um, it resulted in a large increase of inbound leads, like 130% growth in inbound leads. Our SERP positions uh, more than doubled and they're highly relevant. Um, and then, you know, lastly, we start to look for some of that ROI and, and over the last 90 days, uh, as a result of, of some of these big gains, we've seen a lot of those closed one sales following suit. Um, you can kind of see on this graph what happened. We we were on WordPress for years, um, and when we made this decision to move uh, over to HubSpot from HubSpot CMS from WordPress, we launched that at some point in April, which immediately started to, to make uh, gains and traction for us. Um, and then if you look at some of our like you know, sources, we were right around five thousand on average, five thousand uh, website sessions. And then that jumps up to like 18,000, uh, you know, here in, in, in October, November timeframe. So um, some big gains there. Um, and I know that, uh, that you know, there's going to be folks that look at some of these things that um, may have questions about it or may want to try to understand it. Um, and so I, I think um, it's important to get the, the word right from the authority on the topic of HubSpot CMS, which is you. Um, and so I got a few questions teed up. I'd like to ask you and get your thoughts on uh, the first sure. one. First one being, you know, with a carbon copy, in essence, of our, our WordPress site moved over to HubSpot CMS. What might some of those technical factors be that that helped us see this giant jump in performance? Um, you know, given the fact that we we were uh, running our, our WordPress hosting on a premium version of WP Engine with a CDN and page caching. Um, light plugins, things like that. What are some of those factors that other folks might see when they move from WordPress over to HubSpot? Sure. Um, well, first off, I mean, the the results you're seeing are great. And, you know, as you mentioned, results will probably vary for everyone. Every yeah. website is unique. And it's obviously very important to work with a, a partner like yourself who no, understands the new system. And I'm really happy to hear that you did a carbon copy version for the, the platform migration. I think that's one thing that can really aid it, where if you're making an underlying platform change and then on top of it, changing the URL structures and totally changing the content of the pages, it's just a lot for Google to digest. So I think your approach on doing the carbon copy and then building and changing in a phase two once, uh, once it's moved is, is the right approach. Um, now to your question on, on some of the technical stuff, I think generally speaking, one of the things that we see um, when folks move over is if they are not, which a lot of people aren't, a lot of people aren't, aren't necessarily savvy on getting, um, in investing in premium infrastructure, um, you know, we'll see a lot of folks that just simply tap into the infrastructure that we set up our, our premium managed uh, cloud hosting and just simply that change, having those things like the CDN, like the 99.99 uptime, like web application firewall, all of those like premium things, um, they'll see they'll see an improvement just simply from that. Um, the other thing that you know, again, assuming that maybe you are on more premium infrastructure, the second thing that we typically see when folks migrate over from 
uh, a system, an open source system that relies on plugins to build out the site, whether that's Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, um, is that every time you install a plugin, average WordPress site, 20 to 50 plugins. Mm -hmm. Every time you install a plugin, there's they're all built by different developers, different coding standards. And so there's sort of like gluing these things together to make the website come come to fruition. And naturally, when you add those things, it adds more bloat. It can add more tech debt. It can add more call, like calls to the front end of the page. It just yeah. sort of creates this cobbled together system that can slow things down. So in a a SaaS CMS like HubSpot, where it's all built directly into the system, you don't have this concept of plugins. Not only does it reduce the, the headaches of maintenance and management and security concerns that you might have, but it also uh, decreases the amount of sort of bloat um, within the site of like all these plugins being added in. So we'll, that can translate into uh, a more efficient front end experience um, when a visitor comes to the site and just a more efficient crawling experience when Google comes to crawl the site versus having to like parse through all these like disjointed code that's been added to the site. Yeah, those are those are great points. Um, and so like it and we talked about this previously, too. So, you know, I think one of the biggest values specific to HubSpot CMS is that you're taking, you know, rather than having that cobbled together system, you're taking everything um, that is website based and attaching it and weaving it into your CRM implementation. And so like you're really basing a user experience around um, a system that has all of your CRM data in it, right? And so that close connection to your CRM data provides just a better user experience, which as we all know, is really what Google's after. They're after whoever can provide the best user experience is gonna get those premium rankings. And I think that may be a factor as well. So yeah, it's it's important. It's important. I mean, again, we 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 need to uh, someone who used to work at an agency, someone who's yeah. been in the marketing world. We need to put our performance and Google hat on, but equally, we also have to be wearing the end user yes. hat on and be solving for them. And the beauty is something where you can create those personalized uh, experiences. It solves for both. Yeah, yeah, love that. Um, so just, to, I mean, we obviously saw a, a huge jump in growth. We've had a really good experience making this move and this migration. Is, would you say this is common for people that make a big change like this and migrate over to that CMS platform? Are most people that do seeing seeing a change like this? I mean, it's it's hard for me to generalize because again, um, every site is different and not only is, and, and there's so many factors that go into whether or not a smooth transition happens again yeah. the approach that they take yeah. um you know are they using best practices as they build out the site are they changing are they doing a one-to-one -one clone or making big changes so it's sort of the approach can determine some of that sort of their existing site can determine a lot of that um i would say that when we look at um, some data that i can send over we can include in here as well as we recently looked at all of our existing hubspot customers and what we found was when a uh, a HubSpot customer has our marketing hub set of tools yeah. and is using that with a different CMS, so it could be a WordPress. We didn't break it down by CMS, so I can't speak specifically to WordPress, but any other CMS versus a marketing hub customer who has marketing hub and CMS hub, they're seeing a lot of times double digit or even triple digit in some cases uh, results in terms of visitors and lead conversion. Yeah. So I'll, I'll send that. It's a public page. I can send that with a report and you can include that in here, but that just goes to show that, um, you know, if you're using an external CMS, uh, versus CMS hub with our customer base, we're seeing again, much, much better improvements. Yeah. yeah and some good. of that is performance. Some of that will be performance like we're talking about. And some of that again is just once they're on the site, are they doing a better job of personalizing experience, converting them, um, nurturing them, like those types of things as well is that, um, you know, we've, we've seen even where some folks may have a slight, you know, steady state in terms of organic traffic, or they may have a steady state or even a dip, but their conversions of those folks right. coming to the site has increased. So at the end of the day, if you're on the hook for leads and revenue, you're still netting out ahead. Yeah. In our experience, when we did move over to the CMS, we found that it did connect a lot of things, right? And, and our content strategy really 
hasn't changed that much in the last couple of years. It's gotten a little bit better, but I think what, what we found is that the connected systems, everything in one place, um, made everything perform just a little bit better. Um, and so that, that, that's a trend that we saw as well. Um, so yeah, and the, the, the beauty is too, is it's not only a performance thing, but it's also a time saving thing. Yeah. Having everything all in one just saves your team more time and, and allows them to be more efficient. So I think sometimes uh, time is, is, a, is a being our most precious resource. Sometimes it gets overlooked on how much pulling things together and simplifying can save a lot of time. Yeah. More to that point, uh, you know, what, what we didn't see was we didn't deal with any security issues. We didn't deal with any plugin compatibility issues. We didn't deal with hosting drama, right? All of that time that was spent doing those things was now spent executing out our marketing strategy better. Um, totally. It's like, it's like, where is your time best spent? Fighting a system or investing in your customers? Yep, exactly. It's, it makes sense. Yep. Um, so, you know, last question, as we start to look to the future and maybe, um, uh, you know, what, what, you know, the website being our most important marketing asset, um, you know, how can we rely on HubSpot to be forward looking and what is, what is the future hold for like HubSpot CMS and, um, and, and maybe an opportunity to speak to anybody that might have some trepidation about moving over to the CMS? Sure. Um, I mean, just speaking in terms of the direction of the product, we um, there's a page that you can always stay up to date anytime. It's HubSpot.com slash new. And that's a that's basically our publicly facing roadmap. So you can sort of see on a high level uh, where where our head's at and where we're going um, in terms of performance and speed. I mean, those are uh, absolutely core foundational yeah. things that we believe should be not a luxury, but a a you know, a right for every single website. And so we have multiple teams that are not only thinking, we have we have uh, multiple teams, not only thinking of SEO, but in the tools and how do we improve there, but also performance. And so um, I know that our engineering team is actively working on um, the improving the some of the rough edges that we see to continue to improve things like the Google Web Vitals. Um, we're working on Surface being smarter about using the data that we have within the system. And that's not only website performance data, but also the CRM data. And also yeah. the fact that when you combine those, it's no longer anonymous, meaning it's not Google Analytics where you don't know who these people are. Yeah. Um, we're working at, at pulling all that together to make it easier for marketers to get insights on where they should spend their time and yeah. the things they should be doing to make the most impact. So I think we're gonna see more of those types of recommendations start getting surfaced. Um, and then the other thing, kind of in the context of performance that we're working on, this is probably speaking more to the technical folks, is that we're exploring ways that we can get um, smarter about uh, serving static assets to visitors mm -hmm. um, so that when you start to have some more of these CRM powered or dynamically powered experiences, we can actually still end up uh, rendering a lot of that on the front end statically. And all that for the non-technical folks, um, that basically means that there's less stress when someone comes to the site, which means everything sort of loads faster. And so I think that's an area that we're exploring is how, how might we um, lean into um, a JavaScript based front end that's statically generated. Um, basically the end result is like way faster sites. That's a longer term yeah. thing, um, but it's something that we're actively working on. So that that's the other one that's, I guess, performance uh, specific that we're thinking on. Sounds like the future's bright for HubSpot CMS, and uh, we're we're well positioned to take advantage at Evenbound. Um, I know we don't want to go too long, so I just want to say thank you for um, for jumping on and sharing some of your thoughts with us today. And um, surfs up out in California, it sounds like. Um, and Michigan is not up, but uh, we'll see what happens here in the next few days. We've got some weather coming through. So um, thanks, Luke. Appreciate Good your fun. time, and um, all the best. Thanks, y'all.